guys, welcome back to my channel, Shelf Life Extension. My name is Alexis, and today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite books from this past year, 2016. So I know it's been a while. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome to anybody who's new. Sorry for anybody who left. Just wanted to say hey, wanted to do a video. It is a new year. New things are gonna be happening. I have high hopes for this year. So I'm just gonna to wanna to do a video reflecting on this past year as far as the things that I read and my favorite books, which actually wasn't too hard to pick out considering I didn't read too much this past year. I think my goal was 75 books and I only read 45, 42 or 45. So I didn't read too many. And then pretty much all the books that I'm gonna to mention today are the books that I rated five out of five stars. So these are my favorite books throughout the year. I didn't give a lot of books five out of five this year and you won't be surprised at a few of them on this list if you've been following me for a while. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. All right so I'm gonna go from the first thing that I read this year to the last thing that I read this year. So my first favorite from 2016 is definitely The Mad Woman Upstairs. I absolutely loved this book. I got this as an arc from Barnes & Noble. So it follows a girl named Samantha Whipple as she goes to college across the seas over in England and how there's this huge controversy surrounding her because she's a descendant of the Bronte sisters. And supposedly she has inherited this large fortune that nobody can necessarily find or prove. Uh, and she just thinks it's just this urban myth. It's not real. She doesn't know what it, what, what or where it is. And she's kind of over the fact that everyone's like, hey, about that hidden fortune. But what begins to happen is that she starts getting clues left to her by her late father and all focusing around this hidden fortune that's supposed to be there and she has to kind of find out if in fact it is real and kind of what happened with it and also ultimately what happened to her father as well. So I really enjoyed it. I thought that the character was really great. She's really witty and she's really sarcastic and strong. I liked the romance that's in there. I liked the the literary history that's in there as well. And overall, I just really enjoyed this book. So I gave it a five out of five and yeah. And then my second favorite book of 2016 should come as no surprise to anybody who has been following me for uh, the last couple years. And that is The Firebird by Susanna Kearsley. Susanna Kearsley. Susanna Kearsley. <laughs> this is a very interesting book in her collection considering it's technically a standalone. All her books are standalones, but it's connected to another book, which is The Winter Sea in that. So it's technically number two to that one. It's its companion novel. Although it doesn't follow the same characters, it does include a lot of those same characters and it is taking place in that same setting. I love this. Definitely a thick book. If you haven't read Susanna Kearsley, I mean, you could go into this just fine, but if you read The Winter Sea first, you would definitely get more out of it. And it follows a woman named Nicola Martyr who is born with psych Psychometry. I think I got that wrong last time. She can touch things and she can see images and sense things about the people who owned a thing or like just its history. With that, she's an antiques dealer. So helps her out a lot in her line of work. But what happens is she is given a small artifact, which is in the shape of a firebird, and it's from this woman who's like, it belonged to the great Russian Empress Catherine, but there's no proof, there's no documentation, there's nothing to prove it except for what Nicola senses from it. So she goes on a hunt to figure out what happened to this firebird and if she can find proof so that way she can bring something back to the owner. I loved it, it's great. The character is very different from what her other characters are, the romance is great. The history is really cool and it's definitely different because it's Russian history whereas a lot of Susanna Kearsley stuff is focused around like Scottish English history. So it's a lot of fun. I definitely loved it. It's Susanna Kearsley. Of course it's gonna get a five out of five in my book. My third favorite book of 2016 definitely goes to Letters to the Lost by Iona Gray. I love this book. It's so timeless and romantic. It's one of those things where again it follows kind of like that same formula of Susanna Kearsley. There's a present storyline there's a past storyline and they're both intermingling and things are coming together and resolving together at the same time. And it follows this woman named Jess who is running away from an abusive boyfriend and she kind of takes refuge in this abandoned house at the end of a, you know, kind of an own, unknown street. And while she's in this house, she finds this box of letters that were written to the original owner of the house from this man back in World War II and how she starts to read about like this romance and this connection that they shared and she doesn't know what happened to either of them and she kind of takes it apart herself to figure out what happened. If you're interested in a historical fiction romance, this is definitely a good one. I loved it. It's great and I'm super excited to see if there's anything else by the author that I could check out. And then my fourth one, hey guys, <laughs> is another Susanna Kearsley novel. This is the last one that I was ever able to find by
by Susanna Kearsley. So officially after this book, I have read every single one of her books. Every single one. I own all of them and all of them are great. So this one is Every Secret Thing. If you watched one of my more recent videos, then you would know that I was, I talked about this a little bit and um, kind of touched on it a little, not too much. So this follows the story of a woman named Kate Murray, who is a journalist and she is uh, visited by this older gentleman who's like, hey, you know, I have a story for you and I think that you should be the one to write it. I know you can find the truth and the justice in it. And she's like, you know, I can't really focus on whatever you're trying to tell me. You know, I'm trying to work on this other thing. So she kind of blows him off, in which case, unfortunately, when she does try to get back to him and be like, hey, what was it that you were trying to tell me? He gets hit by a car and passes away. And it just doesn't sit with her very well. She's like, that's kind of unfortunate. What, what, what the heck was he talking about? So it really pushes her and motivates her to want to figure out what this story was and like what was happening. And then soon crazy things start to happen. People are coming after her. You could just tell that this is a story. What he wanted to tell her and show her was something that other people want to keep hidden, which motivates her even more. So it sends her across countries into different areas of the world to try and figure out and find those clues and connections to try and figure out and prove the story that this older gentleman wanted her to take on. I thought it was really good. It's definitely a different pacing. It's different scenario. It's a different just overall formula compared to her other books, but I really enjoyed it. And it did take me a while to kind of get into it, but of course I've been doing really bad as far as my reading. <laughs> but this one was great. Once you get into it, it just sucks you in. There's so much to learn and there's just so much going on and it's really interesting and intriguing. And I just, I thought it was great. So there was lots of one. My last favorite of 2016 is one that I just read recently and I am so happy I picked this up. This was one that I saw on the shelves at Barnes & Noble time and time and again and I was like, I should just not buy this because I have way too many books on my shelves. I just shouldn't do it. But I just, I couldn't help it. The cover is beautiful. The story sounded awesome. <sighs> and that is A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. <laughs> just look at this thing. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. If you like Soulless, Gail Carriger, anything that, you will love this. You will love this. This is so much fun and I'm so excited for the next book. I can't wait. So this, just like Solus, is kind of taking place in Victorian London. You know, 1800s London, England, and it follows a woman named Victoria Speedwell, who is a butterfly scientist, <laughs> would be the word. What the heck is that called? I'm totally not remembering. Studies butterflies. She is just about to go on another huge, like, adventure across the seas to try and go do her butterfly thing when she almost gets kidnapped by some random dude. And with that, this other man shows up called the Baron, and he's just like, hey, I need to protect you. Things are happening. I'm sorry I can't explain it, but you need to come with me. And she's just like, well, I was gonna leave anyway, so might as well just save me a trip. So she just goes with him, and she gets pulled into this huge, like, conspiracy see this world of privilege and well-known people and how the, all these connections are there and how she somehow is at the center of it but she has no idea she honestly doesn't even really care she's just like what's happening I don't know what you're talking about I'm nobody but apparently I am somebody it's a lot of fun I think the banter is so witty and it's so great there's so much comedy to it and it's just a lot of fun the ending wasn't what I thought it was gonna be which makes it even better so I definitely say if you are interested in Victorian mystery romance kind of and just fun stuff you should check this out I definitely definitely love this so overall those are my top favorites from 2016 I love all those I recommend all of those if you have any questions or anything please leave them in the comments down below thank you for watching and I will check you guys out later bye